Mindfulness is really a means of learning how to drive. Because certainly when I was growing up, nobody taught me how to drive, how to drive my mind. You just experience this bit and that bit and this bit and that bit and hope to goodness that it works out okay. But if you purposely learn to drive your mind, this is going to help you. And mostly important is the emotions of your threat system do not own them. Right? They are part of nature's mind. Don't over-identify with them. Okay? So, <coughs> Matthew Ricard says, look, your mind is like water. It can contain a poison or a medicine but it is neither. Your mind is like a spotlight. It will shine on many things, but it is neither. Okay, it is not the thing it shines on. Now, the reason, from the Buddhist position, that the West gets into so much trouble is because it over-identifies with content. What is arising in consciousness. Now, consciousness, in the Buddhist position, is completely empty. It's just is. It is a, a fo a, an awareness, but what comes into awareness can be various things. And then the confusion is consciousness thinks it is what's come into it. The light thinks it is what it shined on, the tree or the table or whatever it is. Okay, so part of the Buddhist training is to help you realize that, no, 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 they just, this is the thing. So, learning that consciousness is what makes you you. Content is not. Because if you'd been born a thousand years ago in Rome or whatever, you'd, content would be different. Culture defines content. If you'd been brought up in a loving house or a very violent house, content in your mind would be very different. The only thing that would be the same would be a sense of consciousness, your experience. What is in your consciousness would vary. The only thing is right. And the other point is, look, let's imagine life after death. Because consciousness is the only thing you're interested in. You're not interested in anything else. Suppose I said to you, there is a heaven, you know. There is a heaven. And what happens in heaven is that bodies are resurrected. <coughs> so there, is a, there will be a you there. Maybe a younger form, and you'll have your arms and legs and everything. The only thing that is different is there'll be no consciousness. It'll be like, you're, it's like a robot, really. Like data. <laughs> from Star Trek. So it, you'd be there, but you wouldn't have any, there'd be no, there's no consciousness. You wouldn't be interested in that. The only thing you're interested in is consciousness. And yet that's the only thing that we tend to run away from. Because we're so busy flapping about in the content, in the poison and the medicine, flapping about, oh this is me, this is me, oh I'm a bad person, I'm a good person, I'm a this person, I'm a that person. <laughs> No, you're a consciousness experiencing the content of a biologically created, socially constructed mind. Your job, your task, is to learn how to drive the damn thing, because left unattended, it can do great harm.